All right, so I wanted to talk about uh, BBLs. So BBLs are Brazilian buttock lifts. Um, certainly very uh, popular operation now. You see it a lot on social media. Um, you see it, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, hype uh, around uh, a BBLs. And basically, when you do B BBL, what you are doing is you're doing a combination of liposuction and then you're taking that fat and you're injecting that fat into your buttocks to try to give a better, fuller shape. And with this operation, it's really two main things. Um, it's removing the fat and trying to give a better contour to those areas where the fat is removed and then adding the fat back in. And you know, I tell my patients that more times than not, it's the fat removal that makes a bigger difference than, than anything. Now, one of the biggest limitations of this operation is fat. If you don't have fat to harvest, you're not gonna have enough fat to transfer into the buttocks. And, and, and conversely, you can have patients that have, are just too heavy overall, and no matter how much fat you remove, you, they're not gonna get a great shape with it postoperatively. And so if you look at this patient, you can see that she has a lot of fullness on her uh, lower back uh, and in her flank. And what we did is we did fairly aggressive liposuction on her lower back. And one of the things you can see is if you take away all that fat, even if I didn't inject fat back into the buttocks, she's gonna have a much better shape uh, just by that fat removal alone. But when you do that, she's gonna have a much fuller uh, uh, rounder buttocks. Now with fat grafting, if you look at most of the studies, uh, about half the fat that you transfer will live long term. So there's, you know, it's not like it's one to one, not all that fat lives. Um, when you do it, we typically harvest the fat and we wash it so that it's, it's cleaned up and then you inject it back in there. Um, when you inject fat in, you can't just put it in as a big bolus. You're trying to put it in in, in smaller amounts so that blood supply grows into that fat. Um, the, the key is to try to get more of that hourglass appearance when, when you're doing this operation. And so again, you, you do that liposuction, you wash the fat, and then you're trying to build up uh, the, the, the buttock more in the, the inferior lateral aspect of the butt so that you have a, a better shape. So with BBLs, it's, it's very, very important to talk about uh, pulmonary fat emboli. And so uh, this is a, it's a serious issue. Um, of all operations we do in plastic surgery, uh, BBLs have the highest death rate. And uh, back in about 2017, our, our aesthetic society formed a tax task force looking at this specifically. And worldwide, the death rate from BBL surgery was estimated to be as high as one in 3,000. And so um, there was a lot of uh, contemplation, a lot of research, uh, dissections, etc., looking at why this is happening. And by and large, uh, with BBLs, traditionally, when you transferred the fat, you would put the fat uh, both into the subcutaneous tissue, but also into the gluteus muscle. And it was good in the sense that you had more fat survival and you had more space to place fat, but what was happening is the veins in the gluteus muscle were getting torn and fat was getting pushed in there due to high pressure or to direct cannulation with the, the fat transfer cannulas. And that fat would then go up to the lungs and become a pulmonary fat embolus and people were dying from it. And so um, when we do BBL surgery now, we do not inject fat down into the gluteus muscle. We wanna keep that fat in the subcutaneous plane and that's very, very important. And um, you know, recently there's been a lot of media about death rates in Florida and over the last couple of years there are a number of people that died from this operation. Um, and so it's, you know, it's a serious issue and it's something we have to talk about. And, you know, I always tell my patients, I'm going to be more conservative with this operation. You, you know, I'm not going to try to push the envelope. And then when you do that, that's when you get pulmonary fat emboli. So you want to keep the fat in the subcutaneous plane and you want to eliminate those risks as much as possible.